So over the past few months, there has been a battle in the stock market. As the economy reopens, traditional companies that sell goods and services have begun to resurge from airlines to oil companies. Whereas growth stocks, think companies that are building the digital future, such as Zoom or Teladoc Health. These companies, they've struggled after having such a good year during the lockdowns. So in this video, we're gonna hear why Kathy Wood believes innovative growth companies are gonna outperform traditional companies based on the latest economic data today. But of course, she thinks that though, right? Well, what's really interesting here is why she believes growth companies will split off and go in one of two different directions, a bifurcation, if you will. And this makes it all the more important for us to understand how to pick the right companies. Hi, and welcome back. My name is Tom Heavey. I hope you're doing well. So I'm not gonna make you wait. Instead, let's just jump straight into this first clip with Kathy. We still believe that there is a tug of war going on uh, in the market from a rotational point of view uh, between value stocks, which are more cyclically oriented, and uh, growth stocks, uh, which uh, include the innovation stocks, uh, which we spend all of our time researching. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's, it's a very interesting time, and it seems to be uh, centering around the, uh, the economic statistics that are coming out. So when there's strength in economic statistic, uh, statistics uh, and fears of inflation and higher interest rates uh, start um, surfacing again, uh, we get a move towards value and uh, vice versa. When there are weak economic statistics or uh, surprising low inflation or interest rates, uh, then the growth stocks uh, tend to have their day in the sun. Now, as you know, we believe this is going to resolve uh, on the side of growth and um, maybe sooner than uh, a lot of investors are expecting. There are a lot of very interesting signs popping up right now. The other thing that we're uh, interested in um, in, in seeing, and Clorox reported this last week, big disappointment. So stay-at-home stocks, um, not inventories, but equities, uh, they peaked last summer, or early fall, and uh, among them was Clorox, and among them were many of our uh, innovation stocks. Uh, so the Zooms and the Teladocs and um, and and other such companies. Uh, well, uh, this week, we, we or in the last few weeks, we've begun to see a bifurcation in stay-at-home stocks. Uh, the stay-at-home stocks like Staples, Cloroxes, and uh, the stay-at-home stocks, you know, New Digital World, Hybrid Work. Uh, so, so we were happy, happy to see that just as, um, just to note, to take a little bit of a jog. Um, but I do believe that Clorox is one of these uh, companies that was scrambling to keep up with demand. There was double and triple ordering, and now they're seeing the fallout from that. So what does this tell us? These inventories are not at the business level. They're at the consumer level. And that might be the big fake out here. That might be the big fake out, that that 12% gain in consumption was really inventory building at the household level, which is quite unusual. We don't usually do that, but we had a reason. And now maybe we have another reason. Uh, we have this, um, uh, the, the COVID virus uh, picking up again, um, a new variety. Uh, and we may be, uh, we may be uh, seeing some preparation of that uh, for that in the uh, second quarter uh, statistics. Uh, so this concept of uh, inventory accumulation at home, I think uh, we're going to see um, during, during the next few months. And it will explain if we see more price weakness in some of these goods categories, uh, not so much services, but goods categories, that will be the explanation. And by the way, that will diffuse a huge worry in the market 
uh, about inflation. Uh, every time we get strong numbers, um, the uh, the market seems to, or algorithms seem to, uh, believe that uh, this is bad for innovation stocks. Uh, but we actually don't believe that real growth is bad for inflation. In fact, real growth is going to be very good uh, for productivity. We're already seeing signs of that. And uh, productivity growth will enable companies to raise wages which, without triggering cost-push inflation, which turns into an inflationary spiral like we, we saw in the 70s. 70s, we did not see the productivity growth. It was terrible. Uh, we are seeing a pickup in productivity growth thanks to the accelerated shift towards the digital world, which is much more productive. Uh, so I think that uh, this dichotomy between uh, value and growth is going to, uh, we're going to get two answers uh, in the near term. Uh, the, the first is, is real growth truly inflationary? And we would submit no uh, productivity thanks to innovation is one of the reasons it, it, it isn't. Therefore, interest rates are going to continue to surprise on the low side of expectations. And as you know, uh, the long-term treasury yield, 10-year treasury yield, peaked at 1.75-ish uh, at the end of March, and this week dropped as low as 1.12. Uh, today it's up based on this employment report, and so we're having value, uh, a, value a good value and cyclical day in the market and a tough uh, day for innovation. Uh, but I think as more and more people begin to understand that real growth, especially if it is um, driven by innovation, and increasingly we think it will be, um, that real growth does not have to be inflationary and that interest rates do not have to go up. So if we get, if we get uh, uh, inflation coming down for the three reasons that we have been discussing with you over these last few months, the good deflation is innovation is is innovation riding down learning curves which are characterized by cost declines which are passed through as lower prices think electric vehicles uh, we just learned today or this week that the leaf with subsidies its uh, ev is going to drop below twenty thousand dollars i think the list price will be twenty five thousand but below twenty thousand and even without subsidies the price would be falling so think of that the cost of a car is going to drop and we believe we won't need subsidies in in a, a few years is going to drop below twenty thousand dollars um, that is going to cause a boom. This is going to be the electric vehicle boom. Uh, and, and it has uh, just started. The second uh, reason we're going to see deflation is uh, for, not, for, for a less good reason, and that's creative destruction. Disruptive innovation causes dis, uh, creative destruction. And the more we learn about uh, the, the strategy that traditional automakers have um, uh, adopted uh, from a battery point of view, the more we believe uh, that, they're, um, that they're not going to be able to catch up to the likes of a Tesla, which is really driving this innovation. And, um, and we believe they're going to be stuck with a lot of inventory of inferior products, both the internal combustion engine and uh, the electric vehicle side. And, and, and this latter point, um, uh, we're learning a lot more about uh, cylindrical versus prismatic batteries. Cylindrical is the Tesla uh, battery, cell phone battery, 8,000 battery cells lining the bottom of a car, prismatic, much simpler, fewer uh, cells. So uh, I think it's 200 or 400. Uh, but that is going to end up being a weak spot for these, for these auto manufacturers. Uh, so creative destruction, they'll have to move these inferior uh, uh, products with lower prices and, um, 
And we think that the, the problems in other industries that are disrupted uh, by innovation are going to be worse because many of them have leveraged up uh, to buy back shares and satisfy short-term shareholders who wanted their profits and they wanted them now. Uh, so we think this is going to become pretty pervasive, good deflation and bad deflation. And then the third source of deflation, which is what we've spent a bit of time on here, is cyclical deflation. If, um, if inventories are piled up in homes, especially of goods, uh, then we believe that uh, prices will, uh, will unwind and really take the inflation argument off the table and take the fears associated uh, with uh, higher interest rates uh, caused by higher inflation away. And uh, actually what that will mean is that the bull market, which you think about it this year, think about what we've gone through. Um, uh, we went, we've gone through um, uh, the uh, Archegos uh, uh, debacle. Uh, we've gone through uh, a resurgence of the coronavirus, uh, the threat of tax hikes, uh, and now the, the fallout from China, which is the last topic I'm going to get to. Um, and the bull market just keeps moving along. And so this uh, move, this toggling back and forth recently between growth and value, we think will resolve uh, towards growth as the cy cyclical uh, dynamics of the uh, economy um, turn much weaker than, than we've seen recently. Um, uh, so, so we believe that the, the bull market, again, will continue to strengthen as yet another group comes back into favor. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable to think that the, the equity markets are up double digits this year, uh, given all the headwinds uh, we've been facing. Um, and and the, one of the biggest ones, by the way, was interest rates doubling in the first quarter. Uh, I couldn't believe that at the end of the first quarter, the market was up. So we're in a strong bull market. Uh, we really do believe that. So one of the themes that we've been talking about for a while now is how rising fears of inflation could be bad for innovation stocks. Essentially, if inflation does begin to take off, then interest rates may be raised too. Because that impacts discount rates, this could cause a fall in the valuation of many of Cathie Wood's and ARK's investments. But here's the thing though, Cathy notes how there was a recent 12% gain in consumption. While many point to that as an example of evidence that inflation is coming, the majority of this accumulation of inventory was on the side of the consumer, not the business. However, many investments are simply based on algorithms. Algorithms which see that 12% gain in consumption and sell innovation stocks as a result without taking this into account. Kathy then goes on to note how real growth driven by innovation is not inflationary. Take mobile phones as an example. Over the past decade, phones have improved exponentially, and yet the price of the cheapest smartphones available has fallen even faster. Along with this and the other two deflationary forces that Kathy notes, cyclical deflation and creative destruction, she believes that the threat of inflation is being overhyped by investors. So those are Kathy's thoughts on inflation and why she believes growth companies will outperform value companies. Either way, we will have to keep a close eye on inflation as and when the latest figures come out. And I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Do you think Kathy is right about inflation and growth stocks or do you think the opposite? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I will see you again very soon.